Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome back to my channel, my love release. If you've never been here before, thank you so much for clicking on my video. I am so happy you found me. I do so hope that you will like and subscribe before you leave. Become part of the mama family. Mama's got your back, at least when makeup's concerned, and definitely when that makeup is cheap today is true love tuesday oh i found such a great great story to share with you guys this week so so super excited i dove into the archives into old school hollywood and i found a couple that i had never heard of before i love when that happens it gives me a chance to discover someone new uh to dive into uh, a different era and just really oh, it's so much fun the fact that I had never heard of them before was super, super intriguing. Uh, and I have to say that this week's couple is like very interesting. So interesting. Also, I think their dynamic is something a little bit different uh, and not quite like anything else that I've featured on True Love Tuesday thus far. So I really think you guys are going to enjoy it. Uh, as always, I do do my makeup while I tell you guys this epic love story. Uh, I already have my eye makeup done today, so we're going to be focusing on the base. I want to go for something light uh, and uh, just glowy and pretty, but still very glamorous. Uh, if you guys are interested in how I did my eye makeup, I do have a TikTok coming very, very shortly on this look. I will have the link for that along with all of the products that I'm going to use in today's video in the description box below. Uh, but I did do, I did use the Glamlight X Michaela Part 1 palette for today's eye look. Glamlight has so quickly become one of my very, very favorite eyeshadow formulas. They're just so good. The mattes are effortless. The shimmers are super sparkly and special. They're just beautiful. If you haven't tried the Glamlight formula uh, and you ever come across them on sale or at your TJ Maxx Marshalls, definitely like think about it because it is really, really great, great eyeshadow. So moving along right into today's video, uh, it's going to be a slightly longer one. So I hope you guys have just a while to sit back, relax, and hang out with me for just a minute. Get you a big old cup of uh, sweet tea. Get you a glass of coffee. I said that backwards, but I don't care. Get you something to drink, maybe even a snack. Uh, and let's dive into an epic, epic love story. So we're talking about George Burns and Gracie Allen this week. And they were very prominent performers in, uh, you know, I would say like the 20s, 30s, 40s. Uh, they were super, super famous for a pretty uh, long while. They had really, really long careers. Uh, they just had a knack for kind of staying current. Uh, and but they got their start in uh, doing vaudeville uh, and vaude like a vaudeville act. And if you don't know anything about vaudeville, that's totally okay because I wasn't super uh, aware of it either. When I think of old school Hollywood, uh, things like that, I usually think of, you know, the, the ho ho Hollywood starlets, the glamour, the glitz, uh, the big screen. Uh, and I, I think of like Casablanca. I don't necessarily think about a vaudeville act. Uh, and if you don't know what vaudeville is, vaudeville is basically a comedy act. Uh, but they also sing and dance, uh, and it's it would be, it's pretty cheesy to today's standard, uh, but it was hilarious back then. It's super cute, uh, and I did watch a couple of vaudeville like acts and stuff on YouTube. Kind of researched it just a little bit, uh, and just them in particular, uh, George Burns and Gracie Allen. They were just she was a spitfire. She played this super kind of ditzy uh, kind of kind of dumb blonde. Uh, back then they called it a dumb Dora. Just very dissy, very not really knowing what's going on, uh, pretty oblivious. But she did it so well and she had so much spunk and she had so much like sass and attitude. It, she was hilarious. Uh, and her husband, George, would basically just kind of sit there and humor her. Uh, for the most part. Uh, it was basically, she's the one who del delivered all the zingers. Uh, she had most of the punchlines. It was basically the Gracie Allen show, and he was just kind of a supporting character. Um, but he did quite a bit in the background. It was his brain that really drove them to uh, reaching uh, as much success as they did. So a little bit about George first. Uh, at 25, George was already kind of a a veteran on the 
uh, showbiz kind of circuit. He, since he since he was a child, had been performing, uh, had always wanted to be famous. His goal, the end goal for George was always Hollywood, was always stardom, it was always fame. He was very much in love with every single aspect of old Hollywood. He just, he just, it was, it was really what he wanted. It was his first love. Uh, and it was something that he spent his whole life trying to maintain and achieve. And it really did just make him happy. It was exactly uh, what he wanted. And uh, he, like vaudeville, you know, like I said, it's kind of like a goofy song and dance kind of uh, act was popular in the early 20th century. Uh, he had even worked, and at this point, he hasn't seen at 25. At this point, he hasn't reached any kind of real success. He has been trying, trying, trying as hard as he might. Uh, he's been through about a million and one different partners trying to figure out what his niche was, what was, what was his shtick, and he's just not having any luck. Uh, he has had a million and one different partners. He even worked with a trained seal, trying to find something, anything, that would resonate with audiences and get them to laugh, basically. He was just trying to find his 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 meant-to-be partner. Uh, and he's having a really, really hard time figuring that out. He's just, he just hasn't found it yet. He hasn't found the thing, uh, the person he is supposed to perform with. Uh, and he had even gone so far as to he thought he had found her once and he went so far as to marry her because her parents had forgiven it for forbidden her to go out on the road with him and tour uh, if they weren't married so he went so far as to marry this woman he married this woman for exactly 26 weeks which is how long the tour was and the minute the tour was over they got divorced so still was not what he was looking for was not it was not where he was the person he was supposed to uh, be with, perform with. So he continues to look. Uh, and then when he meets Gra Gracie, he knew he found his partner. Uh, every time I looked at Gracie, I realized I'd finally found the thing I'd been searching for my entire life, a good act. And I think that quote is very, very indicative of their relationship and I'm going to save my personal opinions until after I get done telling you guys this story because I do have opinions on this man. Uh, but you guys let me know in the comments what you think of George. Uh, so again, I thought I, I found a, a good act. Uh, and partly because of that, George fell in love with Gracie. He fell in love with Gracie almost from the moment he met her because she was, I, I believe she was his ticket. I feel like he knew that uh, and wanted to lock her down before anything else could come in and scoop up and grab her. Uh, and uh, the problem was, oh, well, he, there's another, there's another quote. Uh, partly because of that, George fell in love with Gracie. She was pretty, smart, funny, and talented. But I will tell you the truth. I also fell in love with Gracie because I fell in love with making a good living. Again, meal ticket. It's kind of like his claim to fame there. Uh, and uh, very much you can see throughout this story how that dynamic kind of works. Uh, and uh, the problem with that, though, is he, he finds her. He finally finds the person that, you know, he works well with. They have a great act. Uh, they're making pretty decent money. Uh, and he realizes that this is this is the one this is like I you know like I need to lock her down the problem with that is is that Gracie is already engaged uh and Gracie is engaged to a man named Benny Ryan and Benny Ryan was also in the showbiz kind of scene he was a dancer singer songwriter uh performer he was a wonderful performer uh and he he toured very often uh, and he was already touring the vaudeville circuit. Uh, and George goes on to say that if she had married Benny, what would I do for an act? 
I had no real affection for the trained seal. So like I said, he had been, uh, you know, performing with a trained seal. And before he met Gracie, that was kind of his thing. And, you know, after Gracie, he realizes that, oh, this is good. I don't necessarily, like, I definitely don't want to go back to have to, you know, to having to perform with a, a freaking seal. So we got to do what we got to do to lock this lady down. And that becomes his sole mission in life. I love this L'Oreal True Match Nude Serum stuff, but it is so messy. So that becomes his goal. That becomes his mission. He's got to find a way to lock her down to make her his so that, so that way she basically just can't get away. And Gracie, like George, had been in show business pretty much her entire life. Uh, when she was very young, she uh, would tour with her sisters and they would, what were they called? Uh, she toured with her sisters as part of a dancing quartet, uh, but she was less committed to vaudeville than George. I think the thing with Gracie is she just didn't really care. She didn't really care about fame. She didn't care about Hollywood. She didn't care. Like it just wasn't her, it wasn't her passion. She did it because she was good at it, but it wasn't something she necessarily, like it wasn't her dream, right? Uh, so after her sisters had quit, uh, you know, dancing with her after the quartet kind of split up and everybody went off and did their own things, lived their lives, uh, she went on to enroll in to stenography school. Uh, and stenography, I think, is like with, you know, the typewriters and stuff, is to become a secretary. Uh, and, you know, honestly, she wasn't super thrilled with the prospect of becoming a secretary either. Uh, so at this point, she just doesn't really know what she wants to do. She's kind of floundering and is just basically trying to figure it out. Um, so while she is in stenography school, uh, she a friend had told her that George was looking for a partner. Uh, and I think, I believe that she had heard of George before. I don't think his name was super new to her. And the fact that he was looking for a partner and she was kind of used to it, she was like, okay, uh, you know, I don't really have anything to lose. I'll just, I'll give it, let's give it a shot. So she goes and she auditions. And of course, George is instantly smitten with her he instantly knows that she's got that she's got that thing right she's got that it factor and that she is incredibly capable of making an audience laugh they have great chemistry together uh, and he instantly knows that this is the partner that he's been waiting for um and he said i didn't uh, oh okay so uh, she gave it a shot uh, he instantly accepts her uh, and they start preparing for a show. They start working together and getting ready for their first show. Now, George, I feel like had a very, a, a very strong ego. I think he was a very, uh, you know, he was not a very humble man, I don't think. But I also think that he was very, very ambitious and he just wanted to be famous, right? So He's working on this act. They're writing this act to perform together. And of course, he gives all of himself the punchlines, all of himself. He gives himself all of the punchlines, all of the zingers, because he's the one that wants to be famous, right? He's the one that wants to be, you know, a, co a comic. He, he wants to be one of the greats. So he gives himself all of the punchlines. They go out the first night of their uh, first performance and they absolutely bomb. They absolutely bomb. Nobody laughed at any of his punchlines. The only time the audience made a squeak was when it was Gracie's turn to talk. They found her to be absolutely hilarious. So uh, he goes on to say, uh, he says, uh, uh, I didn't have to be a genius to understand that there was something wrong with a comedy act when the straight lines got more laughs than the punchlines. So between the first and second shows, I decided to give Gracie a few of my toppers just to see what the audience would do. And of course, they go out to their second show and the audience eats it up like really good buttered popcorn. <laughs> they love it. They love her. She she has a way of delivering her lines so like so honestly that you know the audience almost they're so outrageous, but it's delivered in such a matter-of-fact kind of way that the audience kind of is 
swayed to her they relate to it. They relate to it. She was very relatable. She was very funny. And the audience immediately fell in love with her. So from that point on, uh, George ended up giving Gracie more of the punchlines, more of kind of like the spotlight, as it were. Uh, and the more he did that, the better their act got, the more applause they received, the more the uh, audience enjoyed themselves. So he's realizing now that Gracie definitely has got Gracie has got it, right? Uh, and Gracie is basically their ticket. Like, Gracie is going to take them to Hollywood. Uh, so by the time they finished their three-day run uh, in Newark, Gracie had most of the punchlines, uh, and the audience absolutely adored her. He said, I listened to the jokes they laughed at and gave Gracie more of that type. The audience created Gracie's character. And I think that is super, super smart because as much as George isn't maybe super funny on stage, he had a great mind for uh, writing. He had a great mind for uh, like scripts and things like that. He just was really great with putting an act together, right? Uh, and, you know, maybe he didn't deliver him the best, but he definitely, he made her, he helped to make her her character, right? He basically fed her every single line uh, and all she did was like go out there and, and give it that little spark uh, and deliver it to the audience and they absolutely like ate it up. Uh, and Gracie was neither the first nor the last person to play like like I said the ditzy woman character the dumb Dora as it was called back then but the thing about Gracie is like I said the, her delivery her delivery was so fresh and so um, matter of fact, I, it almost had a way of as dumb as the things that she was saying were, it, she almost had a way of making the audience believe it, right? Because she just, she said it was such conviction. And that is what made her such a fantastic, fantastic act. Uh, and after Newark, Burns and Allen, which was the name of their act, uh, Burns and Allen went on to play uh, they went on tour, uh, and they weren't not, they were not yet like big time, but they weren't small fries anymore either. Uh, they were definitely on their way up the ladder. Uh, they started making more money for, uh, fewer shows, uh, you know, and that, and that's kind of like what we're all searching for, right? Well, not we're all, but when you're in show business, that's what you want, right? You want to make as much money as you can, uh, with, you know, with putting forth the least effort that you can, right? Nobody wants to work every single day. So more money for less shows, and they know that they're on their way. Uh, and uh, George, at this time, remember that Gracie is still very much engaged. She is still very much engaged to Benny, and George just cannot get this off of his brain. He cannot stop thinking about the fact that if she marries Benny, then Benny is going to take her away, and his their act is going to go out the door, right? They're not going to have an act anymore. So at this point, George is like, I need, I, I need, I need to marry her. I need her to marry me. We need, she needs to know that we're a team, right? Like we need to be together. If this is going to work, it has to be the both of us. So he starts courting her and he does so very kind of sneakily at first uh, because again, she's, she's engaged. Uh, and so he just kind of like starts taking her out dancing in the evenings. And this is really, really easy for him because, uh, and it's a great advantage to him that she loves to go out and dance because as a performer who's been performing since childhood, he's a great dancer. He's a great, great dancer. So he's just kind of whirling her all over the dance floor and basically sweeping her off her feet. And, uh, you know, he's like, I can do this. This, this. this is happening. I can do this. Well, all of a sudden, before he can really kind of get in there, uh, Benny comes back. And uh, Benny came back and basically was like, let's get married, right? Because they've been engaged for a good long while now, and it's time to get married. Uh, and George is freaking out. Like, he is on the verge of losing her, and there's nothing that he can do about it. Uh, and fate intervenes. Fate intervenes in the form of an offer. And 
it was a really, really good offer. Like I, the Lord must have wanted this to happen because they were offered uh, in 1925. Uh, Benny returned and expected to get married. Uh, and George said he was a tremendous talent. One of our top songwriters, a great dancer and an exciting performer. And besides that, he and Gracie had a lot in common. They were both Irish, they were both Catholic, and they both had their own hair. Now, a little, a little, just a little fun fact about Mr. George Burns is he wore a toupee. Uh, he ne he never was without this toupee. He never went anywhere uh, in public without it. Now, I don't know exactly when he started losing her his hair, uh, but he definitely didn't have any. He didn't have any uh, on the top of his head, and he wore a full hairpiece every single day of his life. Now, no judgment because if it makes you feel better, it makes you feel better. But I do think that it was a big source of insecurity for him, which is completely and totally understandable. But I think this was a, a, a pretty big sore spot for him. Uh, and of course, for him to say it in that quote, they both had their own hair. And I don't think that things, I don't think those things mattered to Gracie at all. Uh, so again, about this offer. Uh, the crisis is kind of averted, right? When uh, the Orpheum Vaudeville Circuit, uh, they kind of rescued George by offering the team a whopping $450 a week. Now, you got to think about the fact that this is 1925, right? And $450 a week is amazing money. $425 a week now is still okay money. You know what I mean? Like, that's still good money. That's good. That's great money. <laughs> That's great money. So they're not going to make, they're, like, there's no way to say no to that offer, right? So, of course, she agrees, and they take off on this tour. Now, during this tour, George took this as his opportunity to propose to Gracie, and he did so every single night. I, I believe he went with persistence, you know, persistence pays off, I guess. He asked her to marry him every single night, the entire duration of this tour. Uh, and at first she was like, no, 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 no. Uh, and you know, persistence, I guess, pays off in the end because of fin finally, uh, she just kind of relents and she agrees to marry George. Uh, what does it say about it? Uh, reality, oh, where well, I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. Uh, Okay, so uh, eventually on Christmas Eve of 1925, she accepts his proposal. Uh, and that the Christmas Eve was the first night that, that they were ever uh, intimate, right? Because during this time, uh, Gracie is a very, very old fashioned lady. Uh, and she, no, not gonna happen. Uh, so keeping him at arm's length. But I think that there was genuine love uh, there for the both of them. So on Christmas Eve, she finally just kind of like agrees and they, they're finally kind of like together. They're officially a couple and they're officially together. Uh, and after this, life is great. Life is perfect. George is incredibly happy. Gracie is, uh, incredibly happy. You know, she's, she's, uh, you know, she's engaged again. Uh, but, you know, I think that they really did have genuine love and affection for each other. Uh, so, don't be, oh, okay. So this was also the first night they ever slept together. A few weeks later, they took time off between shows in Cleveland and they just went and got married. They just had a quick uh, little civil service kind of ceremony, just kind of got it done uh, and went back on tour, went back on the road. Uh, and when it came to uh, their routines, uh, George, one of their routines kind of included uh, George uh, asking Gracie if the maid had dropped her on her head when she was a baby. Again, because she plays up that dumb Dora, uh, ditzy blonde kind of character, right? So George asks her if the maid had dropped her on her head as a baby. And Gracie goes, don't be silly, George. We couldn't afford a maid. My mother had to do it, right? Big giant uh, punchline, got lots and lots of laughs. Uh, and as much as the audience had created Gracie's character, a lot of it was pulled from her real life characteristics as well. Um, when it came to uh, 
like handling money and things like that, Gracie was abysmal. She was abysmal at handling money. She was an absolutely terrible driver as well. She had once uh, started a petition to get more streetlights put up in Beverly Hills, but quickly dropped it when somebody pointed out to her that it wouldn't be quite so dark if she turned her headlights on. So <laughs> maybe not the sharpest tool in the shed, but not quite as uh, not quite as ditzy as her character was. She also was an absolutely uh, terrible cook uh, as well. And part of that was because she just never had the time to learn. Again, she was performing uh, from the time she was a small child. And then after that, uh, she got with George and did their act. So she really never had time to learn how to be a cook or kind of learn, figure out her way in the kitchen. Uh, and it was something that George would tease her about continuously. So like I said, as much of it was a kind of a stage character, a lot of it was pulled from her real life as well. And I think that's what helped her delivery with it uh, too. I think that because it was such a part of her natural character, I think that the the honesty and the um it helped the delivery right because it's not it's not that far from acting right she's not uh she's not doing anything that's that far away from uh who she actually is as a person and that always helps uh as well uh so uh like i said her character did throw you know it did kind of draw on some of her natural characteristics uh but when it, when it came to george uh the line was the line was not as easy to discern uh, because show business and because the act was such a gigantic part of his life, it was really hard to figure out where George started and the act stopped. Uh, and I think that goes for many people uh, in his life. Nobody ever, it just kind of consumed his life. It consumed almost every aspect of uh, who he was as a person. Just that need, that drive to uh, become a success and to make it in Hollywood. It, he pretty much let it take over him, who he was as a person. Uh, and he said, uh, and this kind of like, uh, is spotlighted uh, in a joke uh, that he had made uh, after he had had an affair. Now he was, uh, he cheated on Gracie uh, the only one time that I could find out, but I'm assuming that there was more. Um, and he, he cheated on Gracie. And the reason he cheated on Gracie, the, the excuse he used is they were having, uh, the joke that he made about it though in the first place is he said, it was easy to have an affair in Hollywood. Even Lassie had puppies. And that's just, I don't, I don't care for the joke. Uh, but you know, he just kind of laughs it off, right? Everything was a joke to George. Uh, and he had cheated on Gracie with this young, young Hollywood starlet. He had a penchant for much younger women. Uh, Gracie was in fact 10 years younger than George was. He had a penchant for younger women. Uh, and when he had gone out and had this affair on Gracie, uh, he, he ended up actually feeling really, really guilty about it. Uh, but the excuse that he had given for having the, uh, the affair in the first place is they were having an argument over a silver centerpiece. Uh, and it probably was a very, very expensive one. It probably was like a Tiffany's centerpiece, something like that. Sterling silver centerpieces, they're not cheap. Uh, but the fact was, is that she wanted to buy it and George didn't. Uh, and so basically put his foot down and said, no, and she wasn't going to let it go. So he took that as an excuse to kind of step out on, uh, you know, step out uh, of his marriage. Uh, and he did that for a few days and actually ended up feeling uh, pretty guilty about it uh, and went out and purchased the centerpiece for her. And not only did he purchase her the centerpiece, but he also purchased her a rather large diamond ring to go with it. Uh, and after that, I really didn't hear too awful much more about cheating. Uh, maybe he learned his lesson. Maybe he didn't. Uh, but uh, Gracie never really said anything about it. Gracie never said anything about the cheating. She never said anything uh, about the affair until seven years later. Uh, and I, when I saw this quote, I was like, I have to share because this is freaking hilarious. Uh, but seven years later, while she was out shopping with one of her friends, 
she saw a, you know, they were out shopping for knickknacks, uh, knickknack, knickknacks, and, uh, you know, whatchamacallits, what have you. Uh, and she says to her friend, uh, she says, you know, I wish George would cheat again. I really need a new centerpiece. So I don't feel like it really bothered her at all. Uh, and then when I going down this vein, I discovered that it was pretty well known that their relationship wasn't super sexual. Uh, I don't think that they had a connection like that. And I feel like, again, that has to do a lot with the dynamics of them as a as a couple. I feel like it very much was about work. I feel like it was almost a marriage of convenience, a marriage of necessity, maybe, maybe not a marriage of true undying love. Uh, because when a woman, like I know if my husband went out and did something, you know, stupid like that, I would lose my ever loving mind. And the fact that she can so casually just kind of joke about it lets me know that she probably a, wasn't very hurt by the whole situation in the first place. And second of all, the re the fact that she's not hurt about it uh, lets me know there again, it gives me a peek into their dynamic that maybe they weren't as physically close with each other as most married couples would be. Um, and uh, that was kind of like, that was kind of the the everybody kind of knew right everybody kind of knew that that was that was what was taking place or that wasn't what was taking place uh but after that uh they sex was uh, oh he, he in his memoir he wrote that gracie and i had a wonderful life together and a wonderful marriage says uh smex was a part of it but not the major part uh the major part was work and that wasn't part of the quote, but the major part of it was work. Uh, he he basically, he drove her hard. They never said no to a contract. They never said no to a deal. And Gracie really did work her butt off. George worked his butt off. But the thing about it was, is this was George's dream. And basically, Gracie is just along for the ride, right? Uh, this is George's dream and she's just like a vehicle uh to help get him there and uh macy or macy but gracie was coming increasingly just un unsatisfied dissatisfied unhappy she just didn't want she just didn't want to do it anymore uh and uh, around the uh night in the 1930s they signed a deal with paramount uh to make movies and in 1932 they moved their act to radio both were a gigantic hit like i said they just george knew how to write current material he knew how to keep the audience's attention he knew how to keep them invested. Uh, but around this time, uh, Gracie is just, she's just not happy. She's just not happy. Uh, she suffered with uh, migraine headaches, which are absolutely, I don't wish that on anybody. Migraine headaches are absolutely the, they're the worst. They're absolutely horrible. Um, and this was just kind of robbing her of the joy that acting uh, you, or, you know, doing the show used to bring. I think she, it was just time for her to kind of slow down, take a break, rest up a little bit, and just kind of like sit back and relax. And, but George was not having it. George was not having it. He uh, continued to kind of press her to sign these new contracts. And he continued to press her to agree to do more and more seasons of the uh, George Burns and Gracie Allen show. He basically just wasn't letting her take the break that she needed. And this kind of culminated in her having a heart attack. She had a heart attack in, uh, in uh, 1957 uh, when he called her. And he was like, she's expressing to him that I'm ready to retire. I'm ready to just kind of take a step back. I want to relax. I want to enjoy my golden years. And he's like, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. Uh, so in 1957, he calls her uh, to get her to try to sign yet another contract. And she hangs up on him. She hangs up on him. She is, she's done. And the next spring, she ends up having a heart attack. He's just kind of like, you know, pushing her much further than... Uh, he needed to be and she, she her heart couldn't handle it so she has a heart attack and after that her she recovers but uh she becomes a bit more sickly she's not as you know she's she's not a super young woman anymore uh so 
she takes a step back and she tells George that this is the last season uh, and after that she's done. She's retiring. Uh, and, you know, of course, George doesn't really have any choice but to accept her decision and so he does so. Uh, they film their last episode of the George Burns and Gracie Allen show on June 4th, 1958. Uh, and she had no regrets. She had absolutely no regrets giving up the show, giving up show business. And when uh, she was being uh, interviewed and when the interviewer asked her if she ever missed the good old days, uh, she said, and I quote, she said, believe me, the really good days are right now. What was so good about running from train to train, living out of a suitcase and having a quick, quick bite if we had the time? She basically just wanted to enjoy life, right? Uh, she did not find it fun to be running after trains and to always be in a hurry and never have a home to call her own. And then George said, well, I kind of liked running after the trains. And again, that just highlights their the, the very big difference uh, in them as people. George enjoyed the hustle and bustle. He enjoyed the rush. He enjoyed, you know, everything that... Uh, Hollywood and the things uh, that go with it had to offer and she was just done uh, so she takes a step back and George tries to keep the show going uh, and they signed him for uh, one year to do the George Burns show and it didn't last longer than the year people just didn't connect with him uh, people just you know they couldn't connect with his delivery uh, and it just kind of fizzled out and at this point, uh, you might be thinking that George is going to go ahead and retire. Uh, he does not. He he keeps going. Um, and after he just kind of flopped on the George Burns show, uh, Gracie had another heart attack. A heart, another heart attack. Uh, she had another her second heart attack in 1961. And then in 1964, uh, she had her last and final heart attack, uh, and this one she could not recover from. Uh, she actually passed away. Uh, she was, she passed away on August 27th at the age of 58. Now, at this time, George is 68. Uh, he's still in pretty good physical condition. Uh, he's still a, a fairly healthy man. So uh, he just, he, he doesn't really know what to do with himself for a little while. He just kind of flounders, tries to figure out what his role in the world is without Gracie by his side. It's been him and Gracie for a very, very long time. And he kind of just doesn't know what to do without her. Uh, it, but then he kind of like hits a midlife crisis. I don't, I don't know. He's six, He's 68 at this time. So I don't know if it's a midlife, midlife crisis or not, but. He starts dating much younger women. Uh, he, he mourns Gracie. Never forgot about her. But he starts dating much younger women. Uh, and when asked uh, why he did that, uh, he said, because, you know, when, there are no women my age. Uh, and, uh, oh, okay. So, yeah, I forgot about this. Uh, so in 1975, at the age of 79, he makes his comeback in The Sunshine Boys. Uh, and it's a hit. He actually ends up winning an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, and this is the first... This is the first thing he's done in his career without Gracie uh, that he's actually been, you know, acclaimed for that people didn't think was a failure, right? Because, uh, again, the first thing he tried without Gracie, the George Burns Burns show, was a complete and total flop. Uh, so at the age of 79, he finally does something on his own uh, that he can be proud of, that he doesn't have to, you know, thank somebody else for, right? And uh, he was he was so incredibly happy. And then he went on uh, two years later to play God in the hit movie, Oh God. Uh, and then in 1984, at the age of 93, uh, he actually was in the second of Oh God sequels. Uh, and, he, you know, when asked about it, he was like, why shouldn't I play God? Anything I do at my age is a miracle. And at 93, baby, I don't blame you. I do not blame you. Uh, George passed away on March 9th of 1996 at the age of 100, ending a yearly, a nearly 93-year career 
in Hollywood and show business. Can you imagine this man, this man's love for, this man's love for Hollywood and, you know, everything that went along with it, uh, drove him. And then, you know, it, it took, it took 72 years for him to find any success on his own. Uh, I'm very happy for him that he was able to finally find that success and was able to finally find an identity outside of the, you know, George and Gracie. I think that he was so desperate for stardom and I think he was so desperate to be successful in that field that he was willing he was willing basically to do anything that it took uh in order to get there uh and part of that unfortunately I feel like involved using Gracie in a way now I do believe that he loved her I believe that he loved her very very much uh but I also believe that he loved what she was able to provide for him right I believe she he loved what she was able uh to do for him and I find that, and I th also think that's why Gracie was so willing to give it up, right? I think that at that point, she was just tired of giving. I think George was very much a taker and Gracie was very much a giver. And I just think that Gracie didn't have any, any more to give. Uh, he went on to say uh, in his memoirs when uh, he was asked about his wife uh, and if he ever missed her, he said, she was my wife, my lover, my partner, and most importantly, my best friend. I knew what Gracie looked like with her makeup off, and she knew what I looked like without my toupee. And she still loved me. I still go to Forest Lawn Cemetery once a month to see her. I stand in front of her marble mon monument and tell her everything that's going on in my life. I don't know if she hears me, but I know that after I talk to her, I feel better. And again, she's, you know, she was that person. She was his person to as much of us feel uh, to our husbands, or maybe you feel that way to your wife or what ha what have you, right? Uh, it, she was just a giver. She was a giver. And I think George was, it was very easy for George to kind of take from her. And he, again, took to from her uh, till there was nothing left. Now, I do uh, believe, again, like I said, that he truly, truly loved her. But I don't think that it was a selfless love. And I don't necessarily know that it was an unconditional love either. Guys, I would love to know what you think about today's story in the comments below. Uh, I really enjoyed the story. I thought it was a little bit different. Uh, like I said, the dynamics were very, very different. Let me know if you feel the same way I do. Uh, maybe that I almost feel like George used Gracie in a way uh, and it almost makes me mad for her. I'm not sure why I feel that way. It's just like like the vibe that I get. But I would love to know your opinions in the comments. Uh, as always, uh, again, I will list all of my links. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, everything will be in the description box along with all the products that I used for today's face. I will, of course, finish up my face and post finished pictures over on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, guys, if you, if you have any questions or just let me know, I will get back to you. As always, no filters, no edits, no fancy lighting. It's just me sitting in front of my camera, playing with some makeup, telling you guys a love story, hoping you're enjoying what I'm doing. And until next time, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and remember, you're important. Bye.